Good evening, everybody. Um, in 1988, I got my first C++ job uh, when I joined a small C++ startup, small Irish company with a German name, Glockenspiel. And amazingly, I didn't know C++ at the time, but that didn't stop them hiring me. And instead, what they gave me, they gave me a copy of Struthrup's book, the first edition, and I went off to learn the language. And I was amazed. This is a terrific language. I hadn't done any object orientation before. And of course, that was that became the big thing, uh, object or, uh, objects and inheritance. And they were all so cool. Um, but really looking back on it, the feature that gave the most bang for the buck were uh, constructors and destructors. And uh, we use them for uh, memory management. We use them for uh resource management we even use them to write trace macros uh, so that we could have we could see what our code was doing uh, we could log the function uh entry and exit points to a file and and you know if we if you didn't have a debugger and though there were debuggers in those days um but we had yeah we used them and we got a lot of bang for our buck and just to show you like for instance here is here's a string it does some allocation memory allocation and at the end of the, the function when the function exits the destructor for the string is invoked and the memory is deallocated and if we have a uh, a file uh, which opens a file handle in the constructor and again in this function this read file function uh, when it's uh, when it exits at at the uh, curly bracket here the close curly the file handle will be closed the destructor for the the file uh, class will be invoked at that point and then here was some, here was a thing we often did we wrote a trace macro where you you could actually use uh, what uh, uh, pretty function uh, that macro and that would uh, make the things very easy to trace and you, it, this would spit out something like entering foo and exiting foo and your trace class could manage uh it could figure out how far down the stack it was and it could use indentation it was great uh so we had so basically my favorite c plus plus feature is the close curly and i'm not the first person to, to use this i stole it shamelessly from roger Orr, and i know peter Sommerlad has also used it uh, in some of his training courses uh, but about five years ago i was reading this wonderful book by Anthony Williams, C++ Concurrency in Action. And I came across this uh, a piece of code in, in a section on actor-based programming. And this was the code. It was, and it, it left me scratching my head for a couple of hours, figuring out what on earth was happening. So we have this, this uh, receiver object called incoming. And the, re the, the receiver object waits for a message to come in and depending on the type of message, it invokes one of these handlers. And we, you can you can add in you can add uh, multiple calls to these handle um, function member functions, and you just give it a different type of lambda, and away it goes. But I couldn't understand how on earth it decided when, uh, where to to invoke the appropriate lambda, and I was scratching my head for hours wondering what happened. And eventually it occurred to me that the, the wait function returns a temporary object and that you can, you can add lots of handle, uh, you can call handle on it multiple times and each time it'll return a reference to the same object. And then in the destructor, which gets invoked at the semicolon here, in that destructor, it will invoke the appropriate lambda i mean that's just uh, i i couldn't express my <laughs> i was tongue-tied trying to figure I, it was brilliant amazing amazing so my favorite c plus plus feature is no longer close curly but semicolon thank you thank you jonathan that's been an interesting take <laughs>